Hey guys, today's video is on how to keep your wife happy. Well, actually not. She's really easy to keep happy. But uh, it could be also entitled, How to Be a Taiwan. What I've got here is a carpet that is very good shape on the top. You can see it really good shape here. But the backing is all coming off, as you can see. I'll just zoom in here a little bit. You can see how gnarly it looks. So what we're going to do today is we're going to pick off all this backing. You can see that it's cracking up like that. We're going to pick all the backing off and we're going to coat it with silicone so that we've got a rubberized carpet again that won't do this in the future. Now, eventually, more than likely, the upper surface will probably wear out, but it works really, really well and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, here we have the carpet flipped over and what I want to show you is when you're taking this rubber backing off, uh, sometimes what you can do is literally just get it like this, roll it like that, and you can just see the, the backing is just coming right off. What you, what you don't want to do if you're working with any kind of a tool is you want to try and minimize these things as they pop out. Because as that pulls out, you're actually pulling from, inside, for, from the opposite side. So you just have to be really careful of that no matter what you try. Okay, so I tried something different, uh, a drill with an old toilet brush. <clears throat> now, this wasn't a used toilet brush. I bought this just down at home hardware. Uh, but you can see that because it's rotary on this end, you can rotate it in the drill and it'll actually pull off some of this. So all I did was, because it's only a half an inch, I just sawed it off with a hacksaw, chuck it in here like this. And then you can hold this down and it actually takes it off fairly quickly. It's not too bad. Just be gentle with it so that you can see it did pull a bit of the, of the carpet here, but that's not too bad. That, that'll actually be fine. So I'll just keep working away at this and uh, remove the majority of it. You're going to have to wear a dust mask with this because it's really shooting this stuff up into the air. So just go easy with it. Might be worth clamping down the rug, you know, and then uh, that way it won't pull. Okay, so as I was doing this, I found a couple of techniques worked pretty good. Overall, what I did was I used uh, this to pretty much remove all of the light stuff. I, I actually I clamped it down to the edge uh, over here that you're not seeing. I'll just move it over there like that. That's what I did. I just clamped it down to the edge of the table. Um, so what I did, like I said, is I took this and I just essentially went all the way down, just took off the, the light stuff. It does a really nice, fast job of that. Then the, the tougher stuff, the more tenacious stuff that's stuck on there, what I used is just an old plastic one that's real dull on the end, pretty, pretty dull. And I, what I did is I just scratched across the top and took the high spots off the loops that are sticking up like this. Then what I did was I took a brush like this and I got it right down inside and it just takes off the grooves. So it was a kind of a three-step process as I worked down. But I've been at it for 20 minutes and I'll just show you how much I've got done here so far. So that's 20 minutes worth of work and it's taken it off. So it probably take you about, you know, I got a little bit left here as you can see. but. I think it probably would take you about, I don't think it would take you more than an hour to uh, remove it. All. But uh, as I was doing it, I just thought I'd show you that just so that gives you a, a few more ideas as to how to get it off easy. Some of it stuck on pretty good. Most of it come off pretty good. I also, uh, like I showed you before, uh, I started out by, sorry, I missed that part. I started out by giving it a good a wrinkle like this, just rubbing it around, and that broke it up. It cracked it all into smaller pieces. Then what happened was when I was able to go over it with this, it really knocked off those high spots, and then I again went across it with this for all the stubborn areas, and then this just gets out the grooves in the smaller spots. So I'll just continue, do that far end, and then we should be ready to go ahead and put on uh, the uh, silicone. Okay, so we've got it all cleaned up here now. Uh, you don't have to get it perfect, just enough that you're going to get a good bond with the silicone. Uh, I've got a couple of different kinds of silicone here. I've got a home builder brand and GE silicone. Either one will work. 
as long as it is silicone one. Actually, to tell you the truth on this project, you could probably get away with silicone two. It's more expensive, so why bother? Uh, this is just silicone one, this works great. Okay, so we're gonna also use a squeegee. I'll give a little plug to Bond over around here. Applicator gun, and really important, uh, if you don't have a ventilated area, you're gonna need a respirator. This stuff, when you spread it out and you thin film it across all of this, it's really hard on your lungs to breathe it, so don't breathe it. It's actually hard on your eyes too, so if you possibly can do this, in a really well ventilated area, do it. I would love to open my shop door to do this, but the dogs across the street are constantly barking, so I was a bit concerned that I'd hear all that on this video. One of the things that I've noticed online is the guys are saying, don't put it on the bottom of a carpet, it makes your floor slippery. That's true, but what it, they didn't bother to say was if you wash the floor with soap and water after you move the rug, it removes that slipperiness that the silicone would leave on the floor and it's not that bad. I was a bit concerned even but before I tried this I actually washed the floor after I moved the mat and yeah the floor was absolutely perfect. So they didn't bother to say that part so I don't know why uh, maybe they didn't bother to try it. It is slippery on your socks after you move the carpet but just uh, wash the floor down with uh, just light soap and water and it's just perfectly fine. So what I'll do is I'll show you what I'm going to do. What I uh, typically do is start on the outside like this. Uh, I'll squirt a little bit of silicone down here. I'll show you how to do this, but when I put my mask on, I'm not going to be able to talk. <laughs> All you'll hear is Darth Vader. So I'm going to put a uh, bead of silicone down along the edge. I'm going to press this down like this, and then I'm going to drag it away from it. And I'm going to do that all around the perimeter. Once you get to the inside portions, you can just keep on going, doing whatever you want. Um, you can actually start on the inside, get it all it done, then do your perimeter if that's the way you want to do it. Anyway, it's, it works. Just You just want to be able to get enough into the grooves that it fills the grooves and puts a very light coat across the top fibers. Actually, that's all you're doing. So any which way you want to try it, whatever works best for you. I try not to get any silicone on this lip. I want to try and keep it just inside. Another thing that I want to show you is on here. You see how this corner is raised? Once you get your silicone in there, try and make sure that the, the corner is down. If you have to get a small piece of wood to lay along that side just to hold it down, do that. Because what will happen is... The silicone will actually kind of help hold this in that position once the silicone sets up. So, and you don't want that. So you may see after uh, I have a couple of blocks of wood or something holding the corner down. The other thing too is if you've got, I'll move this stuff here. If you've got wrinkles like this, uh, and you, sorry, if you've got wrinkles like this and you leave it, you're going to, that will hold, the silicone will hold it. So once you're done, just make sure that you pull it out and you just keep it as flat as you possibly can. It's just a matter of working it out. Your squeegee will probably do that for you as you drag it across. But just when you're finished, just have a good look overall. Make sure that all the edges are down, everything is flat in the middle, and then let it set up. Uh, it probably take you, I would think, probably three hours to set and then another overnight to make sure that it's perfectly dry before you put it on the floor. Okay, I got the majority of it done. I'll just show you the last part at this end. I have the garage door open so that I can actually breathe because it's pretty stinky stuff. But I'll show you how I do this last end here. So I'm just going to go all along this edge just to finish it off. I'm going to run a bead all along this edge, like that. And then what I'm going to do is bring it across. Now the nice thing about this is that if you don't get as enough on the first time, you can always go over it again on, the, on a second time. You can just keep adding. The silicone, the fresh silicone, will bond again to the... To the already partially cured silicone. 
So it's just a matter of going down this edge, poking it in. Now if you find that when you're working with it that it's uh, too much of a pain to work with, you're, it's kind of getting away on you, you can, like I say, you can always just do a portion of it, let that portion set up, and then go ahead and add it to the extra areas that you've missed. So here we got a little crud in there. We'll get that out of there. It's quite forgiving to work with. It, you don't have to be in a panic to work with it. You can just, as long as it's uh, smoothed down all around the edges, you're good. Now I'm going to finish by putting on all of my uh, weights along here to make sure that it stays down. Then what I'm also going to do is check for any other areas that might be just a bit shy. I can always add in a little bit here and there. This corner's a bit shy, so I'll just add a little bit more there. See how that edge just kind of sticks up there, like I was saying before. You just have to work it into the corner, work it into the edge. Yeah, that looks good. I'll keep it off there. That's good. Yeah, so you don't have to do it all in one shot. Like I say, you can always uh, do a bit, let it cure, add some more. Some of this is already set because I took my time doing it. You can just add in wherever you want. So that's good. Like I say, don't get in a panic. You can just uh, do a little bit of it, let it set up. Do a little bit more, let it set up. Um, it's sticky stuff to work with, but that's okay. We've got some time. Okay, we're back. It's about, so oh, I would say two hours cure time. It's now dry to the touch. Uh, it's not totally cured yet, but it gives you an idea of uh, how quickly it can cure or set up in a thin film. As you can see, I put these uh, pieces all around the perimeter just to make sure that it stayed flat. So uh, yeah, looks good. Now, a lot of you guys are probably wondering, why do you even bother to do all this? Well, here's the deal. My wife has one, two, three, four, five, yeah, five of these types of carpets, some bigger, some smaller, in the kitchen. They all match. The problem is, is this carpet is only about three years old, and you can't buy it anymore in the stores. The stores don't carry this the same color and everything. So when you get a carpet that starts to have problems with it, it's either like my wife, she likes things to match, so it's either change them all or do with one that's, you know, one less carpet. So I just thought, well, you know what, maybe I can fix them, and yeah, I can. Now this one took uh, three of these tubes. These tubes are $5 each here in Canada when you buy them in a pack of four. So it cost $15 to repurpose this mat but it's not gonna break up like it used to. It should last for quite a few years. Chances are it'll last until this, this upper surface, it looks worn and tattered and, and it needs to be replaced. So anyways, that's the idea and I hope this helps and thanks for watching. If you like these videos, please consider subscribing. If you find them helpful, please share them with others and press that like button. It's a free way for you to help me do more of these videos. Thank you.